Okay, so I wanted to do just a quick flip through for you guys so then that way you guys can see um, what I do with my planner and kind of how things go. So for the budget planner, essentially what I do is in the front part I put in the months and then I put in when everybody is having birthdays and then the cap on how much we're going to spend and then um, if there's anything that needs to come out of sinking funds then I have that in black. So blue is going to be birthdays, um, black is going to be sinking funds. So each month I go through and I'm going to just kind of flip through this. I go through and I do figure out what each month what I'm going to be spending. So I've gone ahead and I've broken this all up um, per each week because I get paid week every two weeks and so does Nick and it just happens to fall um, every single week we get paid. So the first thing that I do is I always account for how much money is um, coming in and then I do my transfers. Now, all of these amounts, um, especially Netflix, is going to change um, just because they did a price increase. But everything that's in here is just kind of an estimate as to what we're going to be spending. Just because uh, that way I have it kind of pre-mapped out. And with the utilities, it changes um, month to month, so I don't try to worry about that. But then for accounts, also for savings, I have um, the sinking funds, regular savings, emergency savings, and gift accounts. And I have these all set up back here um, with tabs like savings, home maintenance, which comes out of sinking funds, car maintenance comes out of sinking funds, um, giving, we just keep track of um, when we make a donation, uh, like we did the uh, Nebraska f flood relief we did uh, like cash to the drivers and then material donations um, anything that I have with my shop wish lists we just kind of if Lakin mentions something I'll write it down real quick Lane doesn't usually want anything other than gaming stuff but sinking funds um, I have here and then um, I have this as a printable so if you guys want that I can give you that and then gifting budget we did go ahead and establish a gifting budget. Now, Nick and I agreed on $100 each. However, it's one of those situations that um, a lot of times we don't buy each other gifts and it's just because that's um, how we are. It isn't anything to be mean to one another. It's just the fact that it's not really that big of a deal for us. Um, so then we also have gifting and we have Christmas. We've set up a Christmas budget um, and kind of, you know, I have everybody's name down here and then I write down the gift ideas and stuff like that. And then I have blank pages in the back that I've set up with tabs um, for additional things. Uh, one of them is, let's see, extra paycheck ideas, like pay extra on the mortgage, put money into the savings or put the money into the gross gift or Christmas fund um, just because there are a few months that we'll have a fifth paycheck and then we want to make sure that we get that taken care of um, appropriately so then that way it doesn't um, just get wasted essentially. So the other thing is I did go ahead and do uh, goals for the month and I want to try... I want to make an additional monthly payment to the mortgage each month, but right now I'm so focused on trying to get money into savings that that is really the um, first part of, you know, this. And so I've, I've, I have these as ongoing goals. And then um, I already debauched this one because I caved and Nicholas needed a new vehicle, but we did pay um, well over half of the vehicle and then when we get tax money next year we're going to put the rest of that in there as well and then next year that vehicle will be paid off and we won't have a two to three year uh, loan on that. Um, but my goal is not to take out any additional loans or credit cards because we have no credit card debt. Absolutely none. 
the two things that we owe on is the house and the infinity and that is it and I don't want to add any more debt to um, our lives because I just don't want to deal with that kind of stuff right now or really ever so I keep everything and I track it. I did the monthly planner. Um, I did uncoil it and use book rings to uh, uh, hold this together just as an experiment and that's why it looks like this. Um, I've also included baby steps, paying off the house early, investing, giving um, a month worth of expenses uh, in the regular family savings. I'm finding that I am more comfortable with having money in the regular checking account. And when it gets below a certain amount, I start getting anxiety because I'm like, okay, we don't need to buy X, Y, and Z this month. We already spent money and there's no reason to purchase anything else or don't go out to eat as often. Um, I'm really trying to kick our habit of that because we're horrible about eating out constantly. So, it's just something, you know, that I'm trying to cut back on because it's an unnecessary expense. For $60, I could feed the entire family for a week. And that includes our son that's 21 years old. And he is, he doesn't live with us, but he works here in town. And then he comes over and he eats dinner every night because I told him I don't want him to get into that habit that we had gotten into of eating out constantly. And he's finding, he's so excited because he's actually started saving um, more money doing this. So um, I just put these amounts in just as examples. Uh, and like I said, this is all on the um, erasable. So I, if you know something goes up or down or whatever, then I can go ahead and I can erase the amounts and we're still good. Um, now I generally try to put $40 into the sinking funds every month because I've gone ahead and I've planned that out and I know, okay, this is the total amount. And then I divided it by, um, 12 and then I went ahead and I divided that by four. So then that way I knew how much I needed to put in for sinking funds. Um, once we get the accounts to where they need to be as in balances, like I know how much I need for sinking funds, then um, I don't have to do this anymore for sinking funds. But I will probably keep putting money in sinking funds because it's kind of a revolving account. Uh, things come in, things go out. I like to pay our trash bill one year at a time um, and so that really helps with me. I do not believe in a zero budget at all because I feel like that causes me way too much stress to figure out where every single penny is going. As long as I know that I'm contributing to our savings accounts um, and then I'm getting my monthly bills paid each month, then I'm good. But I am not going to sit there and try to figure out where every single penny is going. I'm going to pay my bills. I'm going to make sure there's gas in the vehicle, food on the table, things like that. And you'll notice that uh, fuel and um, I do an allowance for us each each time we get paid, we get $100. And so that's our $100 to do. So we essentially have $200 a month that we can do whatever we want with. And there's no questions asked by um, the spouse, you know, my husband will just tell me, Hey, I'm going to do this and it's going to cost X, Y, Z. And I'm like, that's fine. He just likes to keep me in the loop and he likes me to keep him in the loop. He likes to know all this stuff. So with that said, this method may not work out for you. You may need to do a different method. Um, depending on your financial situation and what you can and can't afford to do. Um, but in the end, I want to say this is the method that we're finding that works the best. Actually, I should say I'm finding that works the best because my husband, um, doesn't really do any 
of the financial stuff. That's all on me, but I do keep records and keep him in the loop as to what's going on because if something were to happen to me, say I got really sick and was in the hospital, he needs to know what he has to do in order to keep the household running. Now, my goal is to always have the, you know, all of our expenses for the month to have that full amount in the checking account, basically at all times in case something does happen where one of us can't work or, you know, something goes awry and we're not ready for it and you know we don't have enough money in the sinking funds or in an emergency fund that there's still going to be money to pay the bills um, on the monthly basis because I don't want to be in the situation where we get super stressed out about things and we have done that we've had you know full disclosure here we've had several years where we're just completely stressed out on the financial front when it comes to the end of the year, like October, November, December. Um, big, huge birthday months for us is September, October, November uh, in our family. We have tons of birthdays, tons of friends that have birthdays in those months. And not everybody's gonna get a monetary gift. Sometimes it's just gonna be a card. Um, but when it comes to Christmas, it's something that we've decided, you know, this is what we want to spend on the children or in the case of our oldest, we just give him the money. Um, but it's something that I feel like this is going to be a better way to do this because once I have those gift accounts going and I can get that built up, I'm not going to have that stress around the holiday season. I can just go purchase what I need to purchase and then call it a day. But like I said, this is what works for us. It's not necessarily um, what works for everyone. The one thing that I will tell you is I have two favorite bank accounts. One is Capital One um, because they essentially have no fees. So if that account goes in the negative, they do have an overdraft protection component. And I think in total for 2018, I think we had like 27 cents in fees. And that was just the interest on that, that overdraft protection. But I, I set a cap for that at a hundred dollars. Cause I was like, there's no reason to go past a hundred dollars period. Um, so that is, uh, what we did. And then the other thing that we did is we signed up for discover because through discover bank, uh, and I'll put the links below for you guys so that you can uh, get those. Um, but with discover bank, they have cash back on purchases. It's not just their credit card. It's a checking account. And then you can open as many savings accounts as you want. They have Roth IRAs. They have you know, all of these great options that you can utilize for um, all of your financial planning. So definitely check out those two banks. Uh, that is, you know, we're not touching our cash back on our Discover account because we're going to use that as kind of like a safety net. Um, my husband and I talked about it because you can set up the account as to it just staying where it accumulates or you can take it and you can make it so that it dumps the money back into your account every month. Well, for us, we just want it to stay and accumulate and kind of just leave it there. It's not a huge amount, but I believe, you know, I think it's, I don't know, one to 3% cash back. I'm not exactly for sure, but I do know, um, that it's building rapidly and it's, you know, I'm surprised like within, you know, a couple of weeks, it's gone, you know, we've gotten it up there. And I use that for our um, mortgage payment, actually any bills. If we have any bills, we try to, you know, we're going to use the Discover account for anything um, else. Like, and this is how I've tracked it is I've done um, anything that comes out of Discover is going to be in the orange and then anything that comes out of capital one is going to be um in the blue and then uh my etsy is actually under capital one business 
Uh, so everything's divided out and everything's separated, but you have to sit down and you have to figure out, okay, this is approximately what we're going to be making, you know, per month and then figure out um, how you're going to get your budget set up. Because if you don't take that time to set up that budget, you're just going to not be able to get anything um, organized. And it takes a while. And I'm not going to lie, it takes a long time to get this figured out. Um, because you need to make sure that you're putting your bills in the appropriate column essentially to line up with paychecks so then that way you know hey I've got X Y and Z now the other thing that I do have that's not listed on here is an account um, that I have it's a savings account and if I don't spend my hundred dollars what I do is I take if I don't spend the entire hundred dollars I should say I take that remainder and I put it into a savings account because what I'm doing with that then is like if I want to do a big purchase like right now I'm really I have my heart set on an automated um, ice making machine because we go through tons of ice during the summer and that's something my husband was like no and I said well if I save up from my $200 every month, then can I purchase it? And he goes, yeah, then that's fine. He goes, just keep me in the loop and let me know what's going on. Um, so, you know, for bigger item purchases, I will still talk to him about it, but I will say, okay, I'm going to use my money out of my allowance. And, you know, he calls it fun money. He doesn't call it allowance. And so it's up to him how he spends his, and it's up to me how I spend mine. But I tell him, you know, this is, this is what we have. This is what I pay. And every week I go through this and I do the budget and I make sure I have everything written down. And then what I'll do is I just take a just a picture of what I need him to know about. So then that way he's updated on it because it's not always conducive for him to come into my office and look this over. So if you guys have any questions, just let me know. I will link below the um, sinking funds. And basically what I did on the sinking funds, let's see, where is that at? Da, 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 da. I printed these off on sticker paper. Um, you can just print it off on regular paper and then you just, you can use a um, adhesive roller and just tape it down to your page. Now, the other thing that I wanna disclose is this is a monthly planner, but then what I did is I took a monthly planner and I took a notebook and I took the two apart and then I put them all together. So that's why I have so many more pages um, than just what a regular notebook is. And that's another reason why I went with the book, um, book rings on here. So, and it's really easy as you're uncoiling it, you just put in the book rings, um, as it's coming uncoiled. So then that way you're not, uh, having to fight with this, uh, the entire time. So if you guys have any questions, like I stated before, go ahead and just message me down below and I will be more than happy to answer anything for you. And I hope this helps somebody. Um, it's not a perfect method, but it's my method and it's what works for us. So thank you for watching. If you guys need anything, once again, just comment down below and the banks and the other uh, printables that I have to offer for free will be linked as well. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and that your financial planning goes easily and smoothly and it makes you less stressed. Have a good one.